So, yeah, um, I just wanted to start with, I mean, obvious question, but what's your opinion on VAR? I mean, I know what you're going to say, likely, but still ask nonetheless. <laughs> um, yeah, ever since I heard about it, um, even in concept before I'd actually seen it, I was against it, um, just because it fundamentally goes against what football's about for me. Uh, even if VAR worked perfectly, which it doesn't, it would still take away that moment uh, of when you score and the elation of that because a fan has to go through basically a checklist of was it offside, was there a handball in the build-up? And um, that's just not, not what football's about for me. Um, I've been seeing this human error with VAR anyway. Um, and I, you know, I, I didn't like it when I heard about it and I dislike it even more than I've actually seen it. So, yeah, my opinion of it is terrible. Um, and I want it gone and out of the game as soon as possible. So, you say you weren't a fan before it came to the Premier League. So, did you see it in the World Cup, for example? Yeah, so I heard it was going to be in the World Cup, which is where I think I first saw it. From the moment I heard about it, without seeing it, I didn't like it. Um, yeah, and then I saw it in the World Cup. Um, and it wasn't as bad, I don't think, in the World Cup as it is in the Premier League. But um, just fundamentally, I disagree with it, even if it did work perfectly, which I don't think it does um, for various reasons. Um, so, yeah, I think that's what I first heard about. Um, but I've never uh, uh, had a positive view of it at any point. So um, is it just the, whole, the thing as a whole that you don't like or is it a certain aspect to it you don't like? So maybe like um, the screen, for example? Uh, yeah, it's it, it's interesting because it's almost absolutely everything about it that I don't right, like. Right, okay. Um, I don't like the concept of it. I, I, I don't like the concept of sort of um, football is a very, it's not a game that can be added to by technology. I think, I think goal line technology is fine. It works instantly. But it's not, there's no natural breaks in football like you kind of see in rugby and cricket where you think, okay, technology can work here. Um, there is there is specific things that I really, really don't like about VAR, which I'm happy to talk about. I really, really don't like how, for offsides, they are willing to look at it to millimetres. Mm. Um, I don't like this for various reasons. Um, I think it basically discriminates against good and packing play from a striker. Um, if if it takes them a long time to turn, I mean, he should be onside. Um, it just ruins the game. He's not... Do you, do you, think, me, do you think they should be given the benefit of the doubt in certain situations? I think in all, all situations. I mean, the offside law was brought in because it wanted to stop goal hanging, right? It wanted to stop cheating. Yeah, yeah. These players are not are not trying to cheat deliberately. They're trying to play off the shoulder of the defender. They're not trying to gain an unfair advantage. They're trying to play by the rules and they're being discriminated against. And with frame rates, Val can't accurately tell in my opinion and lots of other people's opinion whether they are truly millimeters offside anyway and they're giving these offsides if someone's arms offside you can't even score with your arm it's just ludicrous and yeah that's that's a particular no, one I've, I've um that's yeah that's a particular one i've drawn attention to a few times so like um i think it was uh Firmino, i think last season he got caught off by his armpit and it's like um how many situations are you going to see where someone scores from their armpit you know it should technically be yeah. classed as part of the arm, right? And then vice versa, the arm you can't score from. So we shouldn't even be we shouldn't even be having to be having this conversation because <laughs> it's just so ludicrous and anti common sense in every way. Um, uh, clearly, for me, no, it's not trying to cheat there. Clearly, he's done well to stay so level with the striker with the defender. Sorry, so he should be rewarded and given the goal. It's just it's just madness. So, so is it this um, sort of? I, I don't know. Is hatred a strong word or not? Is that is that accurate? Hatred for VAR? Uh, I, I I hate what VAR represents and how it's microanalyzed the game. It, it's turned it's turned a kind of art of football into a science, um, and I just think it's unforgivable. Really, I do really detest the kind of. I feel like it encourages diving. I feel like it encourages. It, the worst elements of football, the elements of football we don't like to see, sort of anti common sense, niggly little players being in, told they're entitled to go down because the way the VAR reviews things is obviously they look at it in slow motion. Football doesn't take place in slow motion. The way they slow instance down 
it's just in, insane. It's insane. It's going to look worse. Um, and just just because a player's touched doesn't mean they're entitled to go down. Um, and it just that microanalysis of the game, I really do hate. It's not what fans, it's not what I um, grew up loving football for. And 99%, 100% of fans who go to games, um, that's not what we care about. We don't care about 100% accuracy. We care about the, the moments that made us all football fans in the first place. Yeah, and I, I guess that's how this Twitter page came about then and the obviously subsequent petition that you've started. Yeah, um, I was surprised there wasn't more worry about it, but it was in concept told I was surprised some fans seemed open to it at the time. Uh, when it first started in the Premier League, I think is when I started the uh, fans against far. And obviously I started a petition too. The petition then hasn't done as well as I hoped. Um, I thought it would get 100,000 quite easily. Uh, it's more of a struggle to spread it than I thought, but um, mm. I think we're over 25,000 signatures now. So I think it shows that there's, I mean, that's the whole capacity of something like Southwest Park. Um, and I'm, I'm optimistic we can still grow it. And because there's a hell of a lot of people who want their say, and obviously during COVID, they can't have their say. Yeah, the I think so I think partly because of have their say. partly because of COVID and also people watching a lot more football because there's a lot more football on, there's a likelihood that there's going to be more VAR decisions that people are going to disagree with, right? Mm. Yeah, I mean, I I, uh, I don't need to search for terrible VAR decisions because they just occur so often. That it's, I see, yeah, uh, uh, obviously, me. like um, someone like Sky Sports does a whole um, the worst VAR decisions of the season, and there's like just like five parts. You know, that it's quite telling, mm. I'd say. Yeah, uh, for sure. I mean, it hasn't worked, has it? And despite the fact it hasn't worked, they're sticking with it, and there's no sign they're going to change it, um, which is quite concerning. Um, just how bad does it need to be for something to change it? I, I don't know. But I should hope to see. Yeah, yeah. I mean, um, I've seen an argument that people saying it's, you know, because it's VAR in the Premier League, it's different to every, any other league. But I mean, I've seen you make the argument on your Twitter page a few times that there's problems with it in other countries as well. I mean, is it just yeah, sure. the fact that um, we have a poor standard of refereeing that it's so bad in our country? Or do you just think it's just... VAR anyway. I think there's an account that's set up even before me called Barstop, which is in the Netherlands. Um, and there's just as bad decisions over there as there are. I don't really know where this myth that has come about that VAR somehow works in Europe. I'm not sure. I'm not sure where that's come from. I think it's possibly because most people in the UK don't watch very much European football. So they assume, oh, it's, it's terrible here. But the, the, the truth is, in the Bundesliga, fans have protested against it. In the Netherlands, fans hate it. In Italy, there's been protests against VAR. Uh, it's a strange, um, it's a strange phenomenon, this, uh, this idea that um, VAR works in Europe. I mean, European fans tend to be as against it as us. Yeah, yeah, I totally see what you're saying, to be honest. I mean, I'm not a big fan of... Um, a lot of European football, but obviously when you watch something like the Champions League with like English teams and such, I mean, it's even in the Champions League, there's been a lot of controversy since it was introduced. Yeah. So that's kind of telling, isn't it, really? For sure. I think we have a terrible crop of referees in the Premier League at the moment. Um, and I think that even if we do get rid of VAR, I mean, that needs to be looked at. I think the um, Mike Dean decision to send off Suchet um, I think things like that, there needs to be more accountability from mm. referees. And I know people have mentioned that referees doing a post-match interviews. Um, but in any other job, if you drop a clanger like that, you know, you're accountable for your actions. And Mike Dean just seems completely unaccountable for just an insane decision, which I think 99.9% .9 of people wouldn't have sent them off for. So why did Mike Dean send them off? Uh, crazy. Um, I think that a lot of referees are arrogant and don't like to be questioned. Yeah, think yeah, yeah. I think I think it, I think that's right. But do you think, to a certain degree, when there's a you know a decision on on the, on the field and the ref gets the the word in the ear from the VAR saying, "Oh, you need to have a look at this," and I'm having a look at this, you need to look at the monitor. Do you think there's a sort of um, tendency for them to then go, 
oh yeah, maybe I didn't make the right decision and now I've got to make a different one mm. because I've now gone to VAR and the monitor. Well, I mean, the monitor, it's just horrific. Um, I, in, even if VAR works in 10 seconds, I wouldn't like it. The fact now that a referee has a word in his ear, pauses. Um, I remember the first time I, I saw it, I was in Portugal, actually, I was watching a Porto Menence against Guimarães. And I, I may be wrong, but I think Portugal introduced VAR a season before England. I don't quote that because I could be wrong. And um, Guimarães scored a goal. And um, play went on for a couple of minutes. And then the ref ran to the screen. And I thought, this is insane. And because the play, the play went on for minutes, anything, another goal could have gone in. It just doesn't work, does it? And you're still seeing, I think it's quicker than it was when it first came in now. But you can't. What's going to happen is a team going to score and it's going to get brought back. And it just makes the whole, brings the whole game into disre disrepute. So it's, it's just mental. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, totally. I totally agree, to be honest. I mean, it certainly made a sort of, I don't know, it certainly made an impact to say the least, I think. Um, but certain things I don't really think are working is with the offsides. I mean, the whole sort of um, don't flag until you know for sure that they haven't scored the goal, that sort of thing. I mean, I mean, commentators and people in the media have said it a few times, but what if, you know, something happens after that, if it was a clear offside and then the player goes and gets injured because they didn't put the flag up when it was an obvious situation? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's completely laughable, isn't it? It, it, and, and we, you know, we're discussing quite a wide variety of issues here. You've got the, the keeping the flag down, even when it's clearly offside. That's wrong. And most people recognise it's wrong. The millimetre decisions for offsides, that's wrong. And most people recognise it's wrong. The fact that VAR slows things down so much that, that you're getting record number of penalties, because I think mean, we've had more penalties already this year than we've had several Premier League seasons, and there's still quite a long way to go. Because VAR makes things look worse, it slows things down. I think most people yeah. recognise that's wrong. I think people recognise that it's, it's, it's creating a culture of diving coming back into the game. Not that it ever really left. Um, so there's just such a wide variety of issues. And um, the, the this PG mole, or whoever it is, the, the Premier League referee seems to have their fingers in their ears and they're refusing to accept that fans, yeah, fans were never consulted on whether they wanted it. So, I mean, it's quite, it's a bit of a situation for it, really, isn't it? Yeah. Um, I don't know if you've been in a stadium when um, a VAR decision has been made. I mean, I have uh, twice, I think, now, because I've been to Southampton a few times when they've been in the Premier League with VAR. And, um, I mean, in these games, it didn't, didn't really come up very often. But when it did, you were sat there thinking, you know, come on, you know, how long is it going to be? There's a sort of sense of like um, ambiguity as a fan you know you sat in a stadium you just have no idea what's going on I mean it's one thing um, VAR in a game on the tape on the TV because you can see all the screens and obviously the commentators going through the decision as it were mm. what VAR are saying and that and whether the decision's been passed or not but in the stadium the only thing you've got is the screen that's it I th yeah I, think I mean I think that's that's large um... No, carry on. <laughs> uh, that's not sorry to really interject, but that, that's um, that's largely why I set up the account because it's. I felt when I set up the account that, and you know, this doesn't work completely by logic here because there's a lot of fans who watch it on TV who don't like it, who don't, oh, aren't match going fans. But I set up because I'm a match going fan and I don't actually support a Premier League game, it's a Premier League team. I, I get to quite a lot of Palace games because I'm from near Croydon. Um, but there's it's not really being talked about anymore because of the COVID pandemic, but it was so against the fan experience in the ground. They can't celebrate the goals. They don't know what's going on. And they, they just stood there. And, you know, you're left with this feeling as a fan. I don't know whether to celebrate the players. Even the players aren't always celebrating when they score now. They're just kind of stood there. Like, I wonder if that would be given. Um, so, yeah, certainly I think it's, it's bad generally for the game. But the fans are such a crucial part of the game. But I hope the COVID pandemic's proven that. So, um, do, do, you think, do you think? Do you think it's? Um, do you think it's the fans who've had the most effect from VAR? They're not the referees or the players per se. It's, it's affected the game in its entirety, uh, for sure. I think managers 
can see why it was brought in because there's so much money in the game and they like things to be accurate. I just understand that to a degree. I don't think the players particularly like it. I guess the, the majority of players don't like it. Not many players speak out because I believe that they can be fined for doing so. Yes, yeah. Um, I think the fans absolutely despise it generally. Um, uh, I'm obviously, on uh, my account, it draws people who don't like VAR, but it's not hard to find. Um, and the, the people who are pro VAR do tend to be fans who haven't been a regular at a football ground going up for their whole lives, um, yeah. like me and 99% of my followers have. I think it's funny, though, because yeah, I've seen a few fans interact with you on Twitter and your page, and one week they're saying, oh, get rid of it, you know, this, that, and the other, and then another week a weird decision might go in their team's favour. So it's a sort of, I don't know, it's a sort of weird disconnect almost between, like, one week they can be, oh, I'm super angry about this, you know, get rid of it. And then the next week they're like, oh, yeah, I'm pro VAR and all this, that and the other because mm. one decision has gone for their team, you know. It's like, it's, it's quite interesting yeah. to see how it's benefited some teams and not others, you know. I'd say um, the majority of people who follow me are against it, whether it goes for or against um, their team. Uh, certainly you saw early on in the Premier League before, obviously, yeah. Uh, the season, fans could no longer go. You had some fans chanting for VAR if they think the decision's gone against them, which isn't particularly helpful. <laughs> uh, I'd like to think that won't be happening um, in future, but I don't know. Um, but I thought that was very strange, maybe. But the majority of people follow me are so against VAR that it leaves them feeling empty even when the goal is disallowed for a goal against their team. They just think the, the whole thing's a mess. Um, but I'm sure, yeah, there are some people out there who are very reactive and if it goes for them they ignore the issue and if it goes against them they want to sign for the petition and all this um but what, what i'd love to see more of us i'd love to see more managers players fans when decisions go for their team from far they come out and say that was wrong far's wrong um i think declan rice has been a footballer who's criticized far when the decision's gone against him but when a decision's gone for him, I think he said, I have to be a fan of it now. Um, that's not very helpful. Um, it, you need to stick by your principles, whether it goes for you or against you. And that's the only way we're going to get change, I suppose. Yeah, I mean, do you think it would be a bit more helpful if they were sort of a bit more open with um, uh, allowing players to come out and say different opinions about it? Because obviously, at the end of the day, it's them who are being scrutinised with it, you know, it's them who are being sent off for fouls and, you know, waved offside for their goals. You know, I think it's, it does have a big effect on the players, but I just don't think we're getting the sort of opinions from them, you know. I I, I mean, I think uh, it could be a case that um, if we allowed the players to speak out a bit more, it might improve. Do you I think it was that? Salah who mentioned uh, you can be fined for speaking about it. So I suspect that's across the board. And obviously, footballers don't want to. Well, I mean, they're, they're rich enough as it is, but I suppose they don't want to lose thousands of pounds. I suspect if you ask them, it might help because I can't imagine why a player would want VAR, particularly a striker, but even, even a defender uh, is basically given us a situation where they're defending with their arms behind their back. They're too scared to touch a player in the box, and the game's become so robotic. Um, I just, uh, I mean, it's, it's obvious to me that most players probably would want that and are not in favour of it. Um, yeah, maybe it would help if they could speak out against it more. Um, I suppose footballers are generally media trained now, so they're quite robotic in their post-match views anyway. We go again next week, that kind of thing. Um, so it's interesting when if a player would come and say something. And uh, certainly would be helpful to my cause if they came out, whether it went for or against them, they said they they don't approve of it. So I, I know you said obviously you're fully on for scrapping VAR and just getting rid of the whole thing, but do you really not think there's any ways of refining it at all? I know, like I mentioned, even if it worked perfectly, I just uh, really don't like it because you still wouldn't be able to celebrate the moment of a goal, which is why a lot of match-going fans go to the games. We don't go because we, you know, <laughs> we accept wrong decisions as part of the game. We go for the excitement. For the thrill of it. Uh, that's why I love football going up. Um, 
yeah, for sure they can make it better. But I just don't question about that. I mean, it's insane at the moment. Um, yeah, but I, I mean, I've got it gone. Um, we'll stop, really. <laughs> and I don't think there's anything they could ever do. Maybe pro it, unless it was like goal line technology, unless it was instant. And I don't think that's possible. But, you know, let's see. No, I suppose it would never be like goal line technology because it's so sort of straight to the point and it really does one thing and one thing only, you know, has the ball cross the line, yeah. yes or no. That's why it you works, know. because it's, it's black and white, isn't it? Football's subjective, apart from that. Did the ball cross the line? That's, yes, it did. No, it didn't. We can tell, we can tell instantly. Penalties are subjective. You might think something's a penalty, I might think it's not. Free kicks are subjective. The offside law to an extent is objective because you might think, but oh, I can tell, and I might think you can't. So you're trying to make an objective game. You're trying to make, you're kind of trying to turn, like I said, you're trying to turn the art into a science. It doesn't work because we, we you know, we have disagreements about, and that's what makes football great. So I don't think it can ever be like goal like technology. So yeah, I don't think I could ever advocate any position other than scrapping it, I suppose. Yeah, I think it's just the whole sort of precise nature of it all. I mean, you know, they want to sort of look at everything to the nth degree, slow it right down, and then you see some sort of like, you know, horror tackle in like such slow motion, whereas before it looked okay, you know? And they sort of preach how VAR isn't there to sort of, um, you know, be the be-all and end-all. It's the on-field referee who gets the final decision. But, I mean, you know, if you're going to bring in a technology like this, then, you know, you, you think that they give the VAR a bit more sort of responsibility? Mm, well, I mean, if the ref makes the final decision, let the ref make the final decision on the pitch, like it used to be. Football was the most popular sport in the world before this. Um, there was no need, for, it wasn't broken. It's, it's, some fans might think it was because some decisions went against them. It wasn't. It was the most popular sport in the world. It's a multi-billion dollar industry, if you want to call it that. Um, so it, was, it wasn't broken, so it'd be fixing. Um, I, 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 you know, the, the VAR, VAR doesn't have the final say. I mean, maybe that would help if it did, because it could just overrule the referee instantly and say you're yeah. wrong. But I don't know what referees would have to say about that. Um, but you'd have to see, I suppose. But it will all be um, little changes here and there that don't really work. Nothing's worked so far, has it? They, they keep adjusting it slightly. If anything, it's got worse. Just get rid of it. Yeah, I mean, I they have know. made they've made so many adjustments. It's almost so different to when it first sort of started, really. I mean, <laughs> it's almost like there's something changing every week. You know, I mean, how are you supposed yeah. to trust it as a sort of system where, you know, um, it's changing all the time? Um, you can't. You can't change the nature of football. You can't make a subjective game, a, bl a black and white game. Um, so far, it's never going to work. It's never going to work how they, some people thought it could work. Um, I suppose it's just a question of how long we stick with the madness. Um, eventually, fans will sort of just turn off, turn off their screens and when they can watch their bondy club or their lo local clubs to them, which don't have this nonsense, they'll, they'll watch that and leave football to, I don't know, the the analysers who love the black and white that small portion that's who football's for then it's not for people like me <laughs> no that's i can imagine sure. there's been a uh, plenty of uh fans going to non-league football in these times to be honest i mean all it's almost you know better entertainment in non-league at the moment you know or in you know yeah. lower league efl you know absolutely yeah i mean um my football league team is Oxford United and um, we, they don't have VAR in that, this, uh, that division yet, but that's a worry for me. I worry that they're going to roll this out with the football league. And some there was even talk, once there's an article about rolling out a cheap version of VAR in the, um, what's a cheap version of VAR going to look like? It's, it's bad when it's expensive. I don't know, I could get any worse. Some kind of rudimentary VAR. I, I don't know. I worry that they eventually proceed into the championship and then League One will just be left with sort of pure football in non-league and it'll be this product nonsense that just passionless robotic drivel in, in the Premier League. So it's a bit of a concern for me, but that's why I'm trying to keep up the pressure, obviously, and do what I can do to represent the fans and get people on board and see if we can have our say on it. Yeah, I mean... Um... Yeah, I mean, you seem to be doing a very good job at the moment. I mean, uh, I think last time I checked, you have uh, about six and a half thousand followers on Twitter, I think. It's around that. Um, yeah, I know, you could say I'm doing a good job, but I think the the reaction is so strong against VAR. Um, 
I feel like I should have more followers. I don't know if there's something I'm doing wrong, but I feel like it should be bigger. Because <laughs> um, I want to, I know that there's more than 6,500 or whatever the number is fans against Bar who are on Twitter. So, you know, I, I need to get the word, word out there more. Um, need to work harder on it, need to group us together and, you know, United, we can make a stand against this and maybe we can change it. Who knows? Yeah, and I just think just finally, I think uh, I I saw after the Arsenal game the other day that uh, former ref Peter Walton on BT Sport, I think he's a resident on BT Sport for um, all the refereeing decisions. You know, they go to him during games and half time, full time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That. But he said um, the other day, and I quote, VR is not there to get the correct decision. I mean, what do you think about that? It, I, I mean, I'll be honest, I think Peter Walton's embarrassing. And then he, he actually, it concerns me that he was a, a referee because the volume of times that he says one thing and then Bar does the other, it just shows that he doesn't know what he's talking about. Maybe he did know what he was talking about. He's obviously a retired ref, thankfully. Um, he just seems to be there to back up whatever Bar says. Um, he'll change his opinion. I mean, I, I don't I don't really ask, but I think the guy is a bit of a moron. Um, he, he embarrasses himself on that BT Sport on a weekly basis. Um, I don't know why he does it to himself, but I mean, any credibility that he's got is surely seeping away now. Um, but yeah, I mean, to be honest, he's so clueless, it kind of helps my cause because it just makes the whole thing look completely farcical. So yeah, I suppose long may he continue talking this nonsense. Um, but I mean, it is frightening that referees are that. A former ref can be that clueless and it worries me, are there? I mean, my Dean decision was just totally brainless. So um, I hope there are some people with some common sense in and around the refereeing arena in the UK because, uh, yeah, he's not a good, uh, he's not a good um, spokesman for VAR, that's for sure. Yeah, I think it just sums it up perfectly. I mean, you get all these sort of opinions coming into one place, you know, BT Sport, have fan sort of um, tweets coming through all the time and stuff saying about it and then, they ask him and you just think, you know, you know, I know it's a former referee and all that, but you just think, God, how how wrong can you be, you know, disagreeing with the on-field ref and that all the time, you know, I think sometimes you just, I don't know, is it always that good to get the opinion of a former ref? I'm not sure. Oh, yeah, I mean, it, it, it proves that football's subjective. One ref sees it one way, another ref sees it another. That's fine. That's how football was for hundreds of years. But now there's the idea that there is a right decision and there is a wrong decision. Uh, sometimes, obviously, there is, but a lot of these things are black, uh, aren't black and white. So, you know, we all have different opinions. That's great. Let's crack on with how football was for the last 150 years when, you know, I enjoyed it. I don't enjoy it anymore. I don't enjoy watching Premier League football. Um, I watch it out of a kind of strange sort of watching something die in just watching it for the pure madness of it but I don't enjoy it it usually depresses me if anything <laughs> it's just sad to see what's happened to the game it's, it's tragic really with that I think I just sums it up perfectly to be honest so yeah, thank you very fun. much thanks mate